from the headquarters of Telesur English in Quito, Ecuador. This is from the south. I'm Jose Daniel Lopez. At least 100 members of the migrant caravan, including children, have been kidnapped by a drug cartel in Mexico. This according to Oaxaca's ombudsman Arturo Piembert. The victims were abducted on their way from Puebla to Mexico City. Piembert believes the criminal organization, known as Los Zetas, is responsible. But he also blames authorities for not taking enough care of migrants' safety. Authorities in Oaxaca haven't yet confirmed that kid kidnapping. Meanwhile, migrants continue to arrive in Mexico City after they left the Honduran city of San Pedro Sula four weeks ago. They are still over 800 kilometers away from the closest border crossing near Texas. Thousands of US, U.S. troops are awaiting their arrival at the Mexican border. And a few of those waiting in Puebla have hope on back of container trucks. Although they are cramped, they say they will help them reach their destination faster. Well, the truth is it's very difficult. We're only going to arrive to the U.S. carried by the hand of God. If God wishes, we'll get in there. But in the name of God, I believe we'll all get in. But yes, it's difficult. They say that Donald Trump has the whole army at the border, and they're saying that if we try to cross, they'll open fire. Despite all the risks, many migrants say their biggest fear is being detained by federal authorities so they can be sent back to their countries. Mexican authorities are still detaining migrants. Messages of support from various governors and even President Enrique Peña Nieto are of little comfort to them. They believe they are just for show. Since being on the road, immigration services continue to detain them. Sergio experienced the heavy-handed harassment by La Migra, what they call immigration services, who detained his wife and the rest of his group. A few minutes ago, they detained 25 of us, so the rest of us ran to the fields. They attacked us. Many women have bruises from being hit. That's why the various caravans are trying to join forces. They feel unity will make them stronger. The People Without Borders organization has condemned the abuse and excessive use of force by authorities against migrants. They need to stop attacking women and children. They need to stop violating their rights. If this is due to U.S. pressure, they need to detain us at their border, not in Mexican territory. After another dangerous leg of the journey, they arrived at Piji Japan's immigration checkpoint, which they crossed together to avoid more detentions. The constant threat by Mexican authorities is believed to be due to pressure of the U.S. government. The presidents of Honduras and Guatemala have met in Honduras capital Tegucigalpa to discuss the migrant caravans that have left Central America and are heading towards the United States. They say they are working on the creation of a plan that offers opportunities to citizens so they don't have to migrate. Both Juan Orlando Hernandez and Jimmy Morales say migrants have been deceived. They also warn that caravans promoters, they will be held responsible. The organizers promise our countrymen that they'll receive money, food, transport during their entire trip, and they even encourage them to participate in the caravan, claiming that they will receive humanitarian visas or shelter to enter the United States. We'll make an exhaustive investigation of who are the people responsible for creating, directing, organizing, and participating in the organization of these kind of caravans and this kind of migration. In spite of negative messages and threats, many are still standing in solidarity with the migrant caravan. Honduran migrants are not only heading north on foot, some are also on their way in vehicles thanks to the solidarity of Mexican drivers. Please everyone calm down. We all are going to get in, but please let's do it in order. The high temperature of this region, as well as the length of the journey, is affecting children in particular. Cover children's heads and please give them water so they don't dehydrate. Eladio is using his van to carry women and children from Piji, Japan, 
to the village of Arriaga. It is a 98 kilometer road, which would be near impossible to walk on foot. We have to show solidarity with our Salvadoran and Honduran brothers and sisters. It is how we should help protect life. Migrants have been receiving people's help in every step of their journey north. We are very grateful because they have helped us a lot with food and transportation. Thanks to God and to them, we are going to fulfill our dream. The group finally arrived at Riaga and can now rest. The perseverance of migrants plus Mexican solidarity have made one more stage in this trip possible. But they do not forget their next goal, to reunite with their first caravan in Mexico City. The U.S. is going to the polls this Tuesday to elect thousands of public officials, from members of Congress to town councillors. Long lines were registered in different locations across the country for early voting. Control of both chambers of the U.S. Congress and 36 governor's officers are up for grabs in an election seen as a referendum on President Donald Trump's administration. Opinion polls favor Democrats to pick up the minimum of 23 seats they need to capture a majority in the House of Representatives, but Republicans are favored to retain their majority in the Senate. And Trump continued campaigning for Republicans by attacking migrants. During a rally in Indiana on the night before the election, the U.S. President said Democrats encourage millions of illegal aliens to break our laws, violate our borders, and overrun our country. He insisted on linking migration to crime and drugs. Fears over migration has been a key tool for the Republican campaign. If you want more caravans, if you want more crime, vote Democrat tomorrow. If you want strong borders, you see what we're doing. We got the worst laws because they won't give us the votes. If you want strong borders and safe communities, no drugs, no caravans, vote Republican. All right, get them out of here, please. Get them out. 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 Go home to mommy. New York is one of the states with the biggest presence of Latinos. The electoral race between re Republicans and Democrats is tied, but the outcome is vital for the migrant community. New York will elect its governor, state prosecutor, and assembly, and Senate representatives. New Yorkers have their eyes set on the high chamber of the state because, depending on the results, the balance could keep in favor of Republicans or change to Democrats. I want to see it changed. I want to see it checked. I don't approve of what it's doing. So, um, I'd, you know, I don't think my voice is being represented. We don't participate. Who are we going, who are we going to have in office? Then we've got to do some research and find out who we want, right? That's the main goal. Uh, find out if this guy or female is going to help us, help our neighborhood, you know, because my neighborhood, I'm from Brownsville, my neighborhood is bad. If Democrats win the high chamber, new law projects are expected, such as granting driver's license for illegal immigrants. We are migrants, and if a party other than the Democrat Party wins, we will be affected. Because of the immigration, because before, if you don't have any problem when you come to this country, you're free, everything's good. But today it's like, an, uh, even when you're good, you're no guarantee. Apart from the migration issues, other national topics concern the New Yorkers. It's absolutely critical to um, investigate <laughs> the president uh, and his administration. It's critical to stop all of this uh, hateful uh, speech getting turned into hateful policy. Democrats and Republicans have to unite as well and become a little more stronger in their decisions as to what people really need as far as health. Insurance needs to be made. A lot of changes in the insurance structure. Amidst rejection for federal projects regarding migrants, some new faces appeared in the Democratic Party, like Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, Catalina Cruz, Julia Salazar, Carines Reyes, and Jessica Ramos, all of them with Hispanic roots. If Ocasio-Cortez, a 28-year-old socialist Puerto Rican woman, wins the election, she will become the youngest woman ever in the U.S. Congress. We can do it now.
It doesn't take 100 years to do this. 12 million New Yorkers are able to vote on November 6. Authorities in the city launched initiatives to help non-native English-speaking voters, according to official data. Almost 40 percent of New Yorkers' residents are born abroad. These are only state and federal elections, but the ballots will include three questions that change the municipal constitution. The first has to do with the financing of political campaigns. The second investigates the creation of a citizen participation commission. And the third introduces limits for public charges of the communitary groups. Antigua and Barbuda and Grenada are voting on a referendum to decide if the Caribbean Court of Justice shall be their final appeal court instead of London's Privy Council. Experts have argued that the Privy Council is the last vestige of colonialism and should be removed. Some CARICOM members are signatories to the court's original jurisdiction, but only Dominica, Guyana, Belize and Barbados have adopted this court as their final court appeal. Cuban President Miguel Díaz-Canel has finished his visit to North Korea, part of his tour of Asia. He met with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un in Pyongyang. The, the two discussed ways to boost bilateral ties in areas such as economy, culture, public health and science. The, the Cuban president will next visit China, Vietnam and Laos. We'll take a short break now. More news in a minute. to enjoy the cultural diversity that defines our South American essence. Come along to find out the story behind these personalities, traditions, and artistic expressions that unite us as a whole. Real Lives, Friday, only on Telesur. Welcome back. Authorities in Venezuela have arrested nine people connected to the attack of the military at the border with Colombia by paramilitary forces. Defense Minister Vladimir Padrino has warned that this attack could be used to create an international conflict. It's something that affects us all. It's a consequence of the internal war that Colombia has not been able to solve for the last 16 years. Venezuela is the victim here of this Colombian aggression from its violent groups. I ask the armed force for restraint because this is a strategy to provoke us, produce a false conflict on the border and escalate it. We can allow this to happen. At least 18 people have been killed in a bus accident in Peru, among them 12 women and a child. 39 passengers have been injured. According to local media, a truck crashed head-on into the bus. The vehicle was traveling along a highway that skirts the Titicaca Lake. Three former Peruvian presidents could be indicted on corruption charges. Some experts believe former president Alan Garcia and opposition leader Keiko Fujimori should, al should also be included in this process. The Legislative Commission for the Lava Hato case concluded that 11 public projects executed by Brazilian companies like Odebrecht are linked to corruption cases. This has caused a loss of $7 billion for the Peruvian state. Three former presidents and dozens of politicians have been made responsible for this, but others were excluded. 
Keiko Fujimori is not part of the present investigation because she hasn't participated in any of the projects being investigated. The commission also didn't include former President Alan Garcia in this report, which is criticized by different progressive groups. It was his responsibility to make decisions, and he did. Minister Conejo is processing the report, but did Minister Conejo act on his own? Decrees were signed by the president and also by other ministers. The investigation reportedly didn't include projects that may have implicated Alan Garcia. Only in contracts, almost 3.5 billion were spent, plus cost overruns, which go from 27% to 52%. Different groups have presented a minority report as an alternative. We want them to either return the report to the commission so they can include the responsibility of Keiko Fujimori as well as Alan Garcia, or to approve both reports in a complementary way. But one of these must be approved, because they are also responsible. What everyone agreed on is to constitutionally denounce former presidents Alejandro Toledo, Ollanta Humala, and Pedro Pablo Kuczynski, among other authorities, and to ban them from taking any public position. This agreement will be voted on in the next few days. The trial of Mexican drug lord Joaquin El Chapo Guzman has begun in New York. He's charged with 17 counts of murder, drug trafficking and money laundering. El Chapo is responsible for smuggling almost 200 tons of cocaine into the United States. Security has been tighter to prevent him from escaping, something he managed to do twice before. His trial is expected to last more than four months. In Chile, a forum is discussing the rise of the right wing in Latin America. The debate has been focused on the potential consequences for the region if the ultra-right wing model spreads. It aims at exploring the role of progressive forces against the rise of conservative policies and the risk of losing sovereignty against the U.S. model. We have not managed to convince that people's lives are improved by government policies. Some people think that they have worked hard or God helped them, disqualifying the idea that it was social policies that had changed the people's lives. That's the important thing, to overcome the alignment of popular consciousness. This week, the lower house in Brazil is set to debate the school without a party project. Members of the education sector say the bill promotes persecution and discriminatory views of the recently elected president. Stakeholders from the educational sector join forces with social movements in Brazil to reject the schools without a political party project. They say it will legalize political persecution of teachers and will reinforce the sexist and homophobic culture of the new government. The elected president Bolsonaro even said that he will close all the field schools. To him, these schools are ideological. They will create schools based on their experience, their culture, their reality. To us, a school has to have guarantees from the municipality and the state. The approval of the project will prevent teachers from addressing gender issues, sexuality and race. Some politicians are even calling for students to have the right to freedom of speech in the classroom, so they may challenge teachers with critiques of the new president-elect, Jair Bolsonaro. Bolsonaro is even known for calling for the persecution of academics. The president-elect, even before being elected, already said that all those schools will be closed. That means illiteracy will return. What we are defending is education and the constitutional right all children have to an education. The project puts the job of thousands of teachers at risk and will set back scientific research, the plurality of thought and the critical formation of young people. Closing our schools is a clear persecution of the movement and the denial of the right to education to the children who are in the field. So we have several measures of this government that are going against the movements. According to experts, the School Without a Political Party project will give a military intelligence organizations significant power, leading to a witch hunt similar to that of the opposition during the military dictatorship period. Days prior to the presidential runoff, military and electoral authorities raided 20 schools to prevent discussions on democracy confiscated anti-fascist banners and imprisoned teachers. 
Local authorities in the Dominican Republic have called on citizens to take preventive measures for heavy rains. According to the National Weather Office, a tropical wave located over the east of the country will affect many provinces. It also says rains will continue over the northeast, southeast, central and border regions. Several state programs in Bolivia are working to meet housing needs in popular areas. The goal is to provide more than 250,000 social housing units by 2020. The house of the Choque family in one of the popular areas of the city of La Paz is no longer a place it can call home, as it now poses a risk to their safety. La vivienda es precaria. The house is fragile, as you can see. The wood is deteriorating, and it's at risk of falling apart. The couple is getting help from the state's social housing plan at no cost to them. I live like this. I don't have enough jobs, only a few with which I support my family. We were thinking of fixing this site, but we didn't have enough money. He only has few jobs, just enough to maintain us. This is one of the thousands of cases dealt with by the state social housing program. We have the program of emergency. Our motto is house fallen, house built, as said by the president. Our duty is to attend the women who are the heads of the households with children and single mothers who do not have housing or have fragile housing. The program is open to the middle class, who can opt for land and a home for up to $45,000. According to each case, the beneficiary can access credit, partial subsidy, or a total subsidy from the state. We have the mission as a state housing agency to build, improve, and expand 115,000 homes throughout the country in this 2016-2020 period. So far in the administration of President Evo Morales, more than 128,000 homes have been improved, built, or expanded. The state housing program, in addition to helping seniors, families with disabilities and single mothers, it also includes single fathers. Each year, it invests more than $145 million. We'll take a short break now. Join us in a few. We are present at every event of where our nations are staring. We believe in a new global vision, united in every broadcasting. We keep expanding our horizons and working on a closer and better communication. Now, in Grenada, Telesur, the new source from South America and the Caribbean. Welcome back. At least eight people have been disappeared after two buildings collapsed in the French city of Marseille. Rescue services are racing against time to find people who might still be trapped under the rubble. Dozens of people from nearby buildings have been evacuated for safety reasons. The reason of the collapse is yet to be clarified. At least 79 students have been kidnapped in an English-speaking region in Cameroon. This is the worst incident so far in 30 months of unrest by armed separatist groups. The conflict has forced more than 300,000 people to flee violence in the area. Gambia has signed a new bilateral agreement with France. French Foreign Minister Jean-Yves Le Drian is on an official visit to the country where he met President Adama Barrow and Foreign Minister Mamadou Tangara. This agreement will work through the French Development Agency. A new French embassy has also been inaugurated in the capital, Banjul. And I would like to seize this opportunity to sincerely thank France for the support. For those of you, of you who are not aware of it, 
during the very difficult days at the UN, one of the first ambassadors who came to me and told me that Mumadou, the rest assured that France will be by our side, was the French permanent representative. Madagascar is holding presidential elections this Wednesday. People will head to the polls to choose from 36 candidates, although pre-voting, pre-vote polling has been banned since September polls show that most popular among the, can the candidates are three former leaders of the country. Poverty and corruption are the main issues the country faces. About 9 million people are expected to vote. Different restoration projects are taking place in Egypt's capital Cairo in a bid to, s to save its cultural heritage and history. The Islamic Quarter is a UNESCO World Heritage Site that boasts some 600 listed monuments. But decades of dilapidation, attacks, and pollution have caused the site to severely deteriorate. Now, through a series of projects, the site will, the site will be restored to its former splendor. We come to the end of this news brief. This and many other stories you can find it at our website at telesurtv.net slash English. And for our viewers in Africa, Remember, you can find us on StarSat Channel 461 in South Africa and Channel 539 in Nigeria. And join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Telesur English, I'm Jose Daniel Lopez. Thank you for watching.